Clarinda. We are a resilient people, a people of strength, hope, talent, God-fearing and proud. Our greatest challenges are no match for our sense of community. We gain strength through our unity. Our unity gives us hope to our farmers toiling in the morning sun, tending their fertile fields, providing sustenance to our people in these times of challenges and struggles. To our youth, excited by the promise of a greater future, motivated and innovative. To you, community members, join together with a sense of purpose. There is hope for a better future. Let us remember the struggles and triumphs of our ancestors, the resilience of our nation. No crisis can stop our spirit, and no pandemic can kill our motivation. North Central Clarinda, one leader, one government, one people, together, better with Nesta. This is our home, Jamaica, and tourism is the lifeblood of our country. Let's all feel good again. Whether with family or friends, we want you to enjoy your staycation. We have to ensure that they are comfortable, they feel well protected. New standards are in place to ensure your safety. We are here to serve you better, so you can have the best experience. Come out and rediscover Jamaica. We are ready. We are ready. We are ready. Rediscover Jamaica. Heartbeat of the world. All right, check, 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 check. Greetings, 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 greetings. And peace, profound. Positive vibrations and positive sounds. Tony Beckford, I see you. Greetings. Um, Whitney. Greetings, everybody. Pat Smith, how are you doing? Welcome, everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. My apologies. I think we're running a little bit behind. But you know what we have? Well, we have the First Lady, uh, the MP for East Rural St. Andrew in the building. Well, we have the lights of Robert Nesta Morgan in the building it means that all the bells and whistles will have to be intact so greetings again everybody welcome jan i see you gavin bailey i see you fitzroy brooks good to see you leon robinson good to see you uh, we thank you everybody for joining us tell a friend tweet a friend and tell a friend that we're on we're live on the chopping block with yours truly chop chop um this is our 10th show since we started on a new mission to highlight the candidates who are going up in this election and it has been a great success you guys have made it just an awesome venture um we announced last week that this is going to be a large show um 
when I say final show, but the final show in the first 10 that we did. And you all make it big. Um, we have Mrs. Holness. She's here. Um, we're having some technical difficulties with um, Delana Seavright. He is out there in Westmoreland, and the connections are not very good in that side of town. Robert Nesta Morgan is getting ready to join us as well. But we're not going to keep our dear beloved uh, First Lady waiting for too long because time is money and we don't have a lot of it. So we're going to welcome for the very first, well, is it, should I say the first time? Absolutely. For the very first time on the chopping block, the most honorable. Why did I say the most honorable? You know, she might just get to the most honorable. The honorable Juliet Holness, join us. <laughs> Greetings, <laughs> Mrs. Holness. How are you? Hi, Chapo. <laughs> Greetings to you. Greetings to you. Well, folks, you know, when we ask Mrs. Holness, when we ask people on the chopping block who should be our next guest, because <laughs> they, they play a part in who we bring on, you know. And your name has been in that pot for so long. And we've been skipping and dancing, skipping and dancing. So we were we were threatened that we could never ever close the, the series of ten shows without having you on. And with short notice to you, I have to say thank you so much for agreeing to chit chat with us for a little bit. How are things going? How is life in East Rural? Wow. Always hectic and I'm loving it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, yeah. I know you hit the ground running from day one, um, and you have not you have not slowed down a bit. Uh, not just in East Rural, but we've seen you in so many other constituencies, especially during COVID, where you're not just looking out for your people in East Rural, but you seem to be spreading the prosperity and spreading the love throughout the entire 63 constituencies. How is that going? Don't know that I did 63, but we went to quite a few other constituencies. I have a foundation, Save Our Boys and Girls Foundation. We primarily pay attention to our at-risk youth. But with COVID, we found that the persons most at risk were our senior citizens. And to a great extent, strange enough, many, many persons who earn either low wages, you know, minimum wage or no wage at all. I right. found a lot of persons, you know, really don't know where to get the next meal and very often didn't know how they would even get breakfast the next morning. And so they were most appreciative of the food packages that we gave out during COVID. We managed to do in excess of 12,000 packages in the first round. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Twelve thousand. It, was it over, is. We have we... thousand packages in the first round. We have to thank Progressive um, Grocers. The group of companies um, came together and helped us. Uh, mm -hmm. We took about two and a half, three million dollars out of Save Our Boys and Girls Foundation for the first round. Um, we had some CDF funds, and believe you me, we gave out millions and millions of dollars in food packages um, across. Mm -hmm sections of Jamaica. Well, I can tell you it's, it it is it is evident. We've seen it all over and not just not just in your constituency. The good thing about it and what you you've you, the argument you're picking up on the street is that most people are very pleased with the fact that you weren't just looking out for your constituency but you were actually looking out for others. And that was it. Non-purchase basis as right. well because I found so many persons saying, you know, we're really grateful. She didn't come and ask if we were PMP and GLPR, even if we voted. And we were able to make it through the COVID period, the heights of the COVID period, because we right. got support. Well, your, your constituency was perhaps the first to be highlighted when COVID hit us, because you, you were ground zero um, from yes. day one. Um, and we, we, we saw where you, you jumped in right away and gave the whole thing um, leadership, which is what is required and what is lacking in some other places. Tell us about okay, your, wanna, your, your intervention at such early stage. I was impressed with the people in my constituency. Bull Bay is one of the more rugged areas of the constituency. They actually have far more poverty than many of the other areas. It's so much more urban. So while the farmer can cut down some banana and plant it and would only need some salting, in Bull Bay, other than fish in the sea, there was nothing for many, many of my constituents. 
And what I found impressive for them is they literally said, Mrs. Holness, guess what? It starts here. So we have a hole it down. We have a hole it right here. So we're killing COVID right at Old Bay. We don't want it to spread. So they took it almost like a personal responsibility to Jamaica right. and Jamaicans to ensure that it did not spread across the country. And so we didn't see a lot of cases spreading out of Bull Bay once they realized what was happening. People stayed in, people stayed in their communities, and between the efforts of the Ministry of Health, the police and soldiers, and the residents themselves, we found that the cases coming out of the Bull Bay area were minimal to none once they knew that it was present in the area. Right, right. And that, that to me must be attributed to the leadership as well, and, and the people themselves, as you rightfully say, the people really stepped up and, and took it on as something serious. And that I, I guess that's where the whole concept of making the people feel like they are the heroes. They are the ones who are staying at home. And by staying at home, you're actually contributing to the to, to curtailing the, the, the virus. So kudos well, to the <laughs> Yes, my, yes. Were, my counselor wasn't well at the time and as a matter of fact when I looked around some of our representatives either had pre-existing conditions or based on their age they had to stay in um, my husband kept saying Juliet, Juliet, Juliet but I know he understood my having to be out there because right. when your people need you you have to have to answer the call so I found myself out 100% during COVID. And I have to thank the team, those persons who came to the office. We literally went and got warehouse space downtown. Massive warehouse. Yes, I saw that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just to be able to do the packages. And I have to thank the many persons who volunteered, who came, spaced out, they did their social distance, and they packed thousands and thousands of bags of food. Wow, and other constituencies benefit throughout Kingston and St. Andrew, and even in the countryside. And that was just awesome. That was just awesome. Mrs. Solis, you 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 are no stranger to the politics. If 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 I, I don't visit the rum bar very often, you know. But when I when I when I pass by <laughs> when I pass by and you hear the conversation, um you're one of the most fierce uh politician in town based on what people are saying they said you are when it comes to the politics and for someone who i have been around politics for a long while and for i think people would sometimes want to think that you are new to politics tell us about your transition into politics itself from your professional life look i'm sort of new to politics you know um, <laughs> the, the little i got the little i got involved initially was doing Senior Citizen Street and Children's Street in my husband's constituency. Um, growing up in a church, my mother always helped, always took care of shut-ins. So for me, being a social worker just comes naturally. Naturally, I yes. enjoy that. I yeah, enjoy taking care of people. So when, when I just sort of took a step back and watched my husband at work, I realized Andrew loved Jamaica, really, really loved Jamaica. And I picked up as a professional and somebody who had been educated and many of us who are educated literally sit on the fence we don't get involved and we don't understand that we have a duty to making an effort to be involved in the political process so i said you know in what way can i help and i started working on the labor party training manuals and from what i knew in audit and just my street knowledge because being in yes. construction really exposed you to the average man, my men on the construction site and women are the average Jamaicans. So you really get to know how people think, what they need, what their desires are, and how you can help them. So that was really my impetus. And I decided, okay, let me get involved. Let me see how I can help the party. Because I really believed strongly that this was the best prime minister we could have. This is the best party to lead and to take Jamaica forward. And so... The, the rest is history. I, I got involved wanting to be in the background, in the side, <laughs> not quite on the sideline, but I really wanted to stay in the background. I couldn't yes. like, believe that um, it was that sort of turn of events, and people decided, look, they wanted me to come and represent. And in deciding to go into East Rural, I literally fell in love with the people. I realized they were very resilient, they worked hard, they just wanted good representation. And I decided at the time, look, if 
we were not government going forward all of the time invested would not have been worth it and at that time i decided let me give it my all i i campaigned like hell <laughs> <laughs> i just literally just sort of just closed down mentally and just said look here just give it 100 percent." so we worked day we worked night we had a really really good team and we ended up being victorious out in the constituency and as one would say, the rest is history because we were victorious in the country as well. Yes. We won yes. how much? One seat. <laughs> one seat. It could be very yeah. well. I mean, it could be very well that decision would have um, <laughs> contributed to us being government today. But I have to, I have to, I have to um, backtrack a little bit and ask you. How are the two boys? They're, they're growing up in you know, oh, our boys that's are Wonderful, up. wonderful. Um, 15 and 17, the older. Yes. Are we two? Just about passing Andrew in terms of his height. Getting wow. tall, big men, yes. I'm proud of wow. them. They are they're really, really sweet, still innocent. <laughs> are, are any of them leaning towards the politics, Mrs. H? Lord. <laughs> oh boy, let me see. Let me, let me see. I, I, I don't know. I keep wondering. I ask them sometimes. Yes, I think they have sort of a first-hand look at how involved it is, how much work it is. They observe their dad. He is busy a lot. And literally, we have to carve out the time to get to spend with them and to visit them in their room or have dinner together so that you can get to talk to them and right. find out what is happening with their lives. But it is always a sacrifice for your family. It awesome. is really a sacrifice. It is. It is. And I think a lot of Jamaicans were concerned at one point, boy, how is this gonna go? Because your work and with the with your husband's work, it's it's a lot of work. I mean, his work is 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 for the entire nation. You took on just about a national um profile as well, because you're not just operating as the member of parliament for East Rural. You also operate in the capacity as a first lady, and that does carry a lot of national prominence. I know the two boys sometime probably miss mom and dad but back into the hustle and bustle so when we see you out there mrs Sonis, in your big boot your steel toe <laughs> this is not just a facade this is, no, this not, is at you. <laughs> not at all if you visit the construction site i know how to vibrate concrete though i don't need to do it my workmen understand that i have to learn every single thing and it's the same approach that i take to the scene Yes. If I'm doing a job, I should understand it fully, and there is nothing that I'm too proud to do. Once it is earning an honest living, I will get involved. And so, if I'm in my constituency and I'm in laying blocks, I can tell them it's not laying good, it's not plumbing, it's not square. And I appreciate that I understand. So, you can actually lay a few blocks to Mrs. Holness? Oh, absolutely. If wow. the road surface look like it don't cut out properly, I can go back and complain and say, I wish you wouldn't use so much mall here. You put some shingle. I would be able to look and say, no, man, that is not two and a half inch of asphalt. Wow. <laughs> so you see, and I want to say to the viewers, I see a lot of persons are commenting here. One of the things that you guys must know, because a lot of people sometimes see it and figure more than less. Politicians always try to find themselves where the heavy duty equipment are, where the workmen are for a photo up. And a no, lot I of got persons... right the back home. I, I see that. I see we saw you the back home. I can manage the roller. I can right. manage the party. So it's not a photo app for you. You understand these oh. things. And that's something good. When you bring that level of exposure to your constituency, it means that you cannot get shabby work. That's one. And you will understand the intricacies of what it takes to get good road surface, good construction projects going. And, and we, we can't we can't thank you for that. That's great. Okay, Chapa, you made a very good point because one of the things I keep saying to the contractors who work in the constituency. Israel is so massive that we can't afford to be in a position that we do work and then we have to fix it shortly thereafter. So like recently we did a road opening. We knew beforehand that we had problems with the piping from NWC for our water. We also know that another community is relying on that water supply being very well executed. 
And so to see us meeting as a community and saying, guess what? We're going to wait on this road. Though the money is ready for the road, we want the water first. And with advocacy and representation and the determination of the people in the community as well, we got to a place where all our pipes were laid. We tested the water. We were sure we had water sorted out before we actually paved our road. So we ended up getting retaining walls, drainage, piping for water, and then we got the road. And that is a community that has not seen their road repaired for over 30 years. So many of the roads in East Rural, when we go in and we are fixing those roads, you would hear, it's 50 years now since my road don't fix, it's 30 years since my road don't mm -hmm. fix. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that the quality of work done is done in such a way that we're moving on to another road, not the same one we did five years ago. Right. Right. Now, I, I, I would never, ever attempt to ask you to go down the list of projects that you have done, because <laughs> let me tell you, that's going to take two shows. Thank you. <laughs> yes, that's true. I said because the same thing the other day. I said the yeah, same it, thing it's the a other lot. Day. It's, because it's we lot. watch you on social media, Mrs. Solis, and I can tell you, um, the only person that we see would have have that level of prominence on social media. And, I, and I'm saying on social media because you basically, it's a receipt. You're documenting what you're doing. So it can never be said. Anybody who asks, so what has Mrs. Holness been doing in East Rural? You'd be, you'd have to be living <laughs> in a different planet for you not to know, right? But what are some of the major, if you could give us five of your, your top, projects within the constituents in the last four years, what would that be? Look, in terms of roads, numerous because of the, the, the just the, the road network in the constituency is massive. So in the Garden Town Division, a big one was Irish Town Road from Papin all the way through Newcastle to Section. It has made a significant impact. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the Mavis Bank Division, from Gover Ridge to Content, New Road, Mount Charles, the same. They call an area back scheme known close to, to Morgan Vale, between Mount Charles and Morgan Vale, New Road. They have projects that are coming on as well, which they are aware of. Dallas Castle as well. A lot of our big retaining walls that were critical to be replaced are in water projects for Clydesdale done. Tana Hill getting water for the first time in 10 years. Wow. They also got road for the first time in 50 years. It has been phenomenal. A lot of our farm roads, which are very important for me because it makes it far more cost effective for our farmers. And even in our very densely populated harbor view, a lot of time the coral, they feel like they're not getting enough. Harbour View is about 5 to 10 percent of the size of the constituency. Um, yes. Very, very urban, actually, have very good roads. They don't know it because they haven't seen the rest of the constituency. The rest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but they have also had many of their roads being patched out. I, I notified them of quite a few that they have not paid attention to Mars Drive being one of their key roads. Um, but we have continued to do infrastructure work, water, because those are the two key things that people needed. We have invested mm -hmm. a lot in education. In the four years since we have been there, we have spent more than $30 million in purses getting both tuition funding as well as help with bags, books, and supplies for school. And we have been able to do so as well through my own foundation. We do right. not sit down for a moment and must thank Cement Company as well because we reach out to corporate and yes. we get sponsorship as well for road improvement work. Um, Cement Company actually assisted us with Savage Bed, with David's Hill, um, just the, oh, and in the Kintyre Division, um, yes. St. Joseph Rose or Clark Street. I mean, we have done so much. The other day I said, you know what, I literally need to just sit back and pull up the listing and reissue the newsletter. Because yes. we have been able to achieve a lot. Maryland also got a water supply in. They have not had reliable water for many, many years. Once there's a drought, there's no water. And so they are very, very happy to have a representative that makes a difference. I made it a commitment of mine that the day I became an MP, 
that's the day my campaign starts. And the day the electoral is called, that's the day my campaign ends. Right, right, <laughs> because right. Because the campaign must be the work that I have delivered Precisely. in the constituency for the people. And we, we saw that because if you look at your timeline, and I tell people all the time, go to Mrs. Holness page and just look. It's right there. Every single step of the way, it's documented. That's a receipt. I can't change it. You can't change it. It's out there. <laughs> And it has been oh, documented from day one you started. You basically set the trend as it relates to <laughs> documenting your stuff on social media. So again, we have to give you credit for that because that's just awesome. Um, um, folks, we still have Robert Nesta Morgan, who is going to join us, Mrs. Hollis. I, I, might, I might have to, to bring the young... I, I keep calling him a young fella in, you know. But I'm gonna but bring he's him certainly younger than I am. Huh? <laughs> he's certainly younger than I am. <laughs> yeah, well, he's he's backstage. That's, we can see him backstage here having a glass of wine and see him or something. Oh. <laughs> but Mrs. Oles, there there's a lot of persons. We have about 450 persons watching now. We're on um Facebook, of course, and we're also on our YouTube channel. Um, and persons are there's a lot of comments coming through, and you'll get a chance to respond to some of these in a few. Um, but folks, well, we're gonna take a little, we're gonna take a quick breather, Mrs. Holy, for a, a couple of seconds, and we'll come right back. And um, all right, thank you so much. So stick and stay with me. Listen, me come rediscover Jamaica, the heartbeat of the world. Because tourism are the lifeblood of a country And it is an important industry We want every Jamaican to support we From Niggle Point go straight back to Porty You are we number one priority We are do everything to secure your safety Tell it to your neighbor, family and friends Join us and start feel good again Come join us and feel good again Jamaican heartbeat Jamaica Come join us and feel good again So we're cooling out at the bar with some fresh drink mixes. What drink are you going to recommend? Our specialty is the Blue Lagoon. It is named after the famous Blue Lagoon, which is right across from Goblin. I'm not going to tell you the ingredients. You have to come and try it for yourself. AC feels good to be out and about. And today, we're on location at the Acai Cafe. Hi, Kerry. How does it feel to be out and about? It feels amazing. Nice. So what are some of your favorite activities to do on our island? Chasing waterfalls, scuba diving, and of course, just chilling on the beach. It's time to feel good again. Rediscover Jamaica. There are tons of hidden gems. Staycation, staycation, staycation. So Mr. Greetings, welcome to one and all to our land of scat, reggae and dance hall. Come we go beach, river and waterfall, make we have a lot of fun until the nightfall. Hold a vibe, eat something with a drink in your hand, jerk chicken, bread food, roast fish, yellow yam. This is for all Jamaicans, every boy, every girl, enjoy Jamaica, the heartbeat of the world. Come join us and feel good again. Jamaican heartbeat. Jamaica. Come join us and feel good again. Jamaican heartbeat Love it Come join us and feel good again Heartbeat of the world Listen me Alright, so welcome back Welcome back everybody, welcome back We still have with us the Honorable Juliet Holness uh, East Rural St. Andrew And we still have with us Waiting in the wings the man himself from North Central Clarendon, Robert Nesta Morgan. Um, Mrs. Solis, welcome back. Oh, okay, Chopper, I'm still here. I, I was watching your tourism a while ago, and yes. it would be remiss of me if I do not say that Buju Banton obviously won because he used areas of East Rural St. Andrew in his video. All right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see those painted rocks in the Jamaican colors, it's a part of our tourism product. We have to thank TPB, TEF, for the funding used for our Spruce Up Jamaica segment. 
and our farmers very grateful for it because we're going into strawberries we have other berries on the the, the um program and we have gone into Irish potato. So our farmers doing better for those who are struggling with coffee. Many of them have gone into Irish potato, which we grow all year round in East Rural St. Andrew. Awesome. And so the farmers stepping up in terms of their productivity and their profitability. All right, awesome. Mr. Hitch, I want you to set yeah. your camera a little bit to your left so you can pull that screen up a little bit for us. Um, uh, no, fo no, folks, you, you, all right. you, you get the there you go, perfect. Now you get the gist, folks. Mrs. H is claiming, and I'll put it on record, <laughs> that Buju won because the video came from East yeah. Rural. Yes, um, <laughs> awesome work. In 2018, Mrs. H, we, I remember you spoke when you came in, you spoke um, strongly about the diaspora investing in Jamaica. I think one of your, one of your initial conversations was encouraging people from the diaspora to invest in Jamaica and the diaspora a lot of people are here right now and most people will from the diaspora will see this 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 conversation how has that been going on is there still a big drive to invite people to invest and if so what type of investment no well i think more and more persons are getting involved before jamaicans would invest by selling barrels back home that's all well and good but what we really need is the creativity and the connections that they have having left jamaica and gotten involved in either education overseas, in industry overseas, they have the opportunity in a first world country to be so much more connected to opportunities that we can leverage here in Jamaica. So we want Jamaicans who have gone overseas, who have built themselves overseas, to start to look for opportunities to grow the various industries in Jamaica. And I believe more and more persons are getting involved in doing so. Awesome, awesome. So a lot of folks have been asking about that. There you have it. Jamaicans, it's not just about the monetary value of what you bring, but actually the skills that you harness while you're overseas is also That's welcome so as part of the investment. Great. Well, Mrs. Solis, we're not going to keep you too long. I know a lot of people from East Rural is watching and they're dying to hear from you. I mean, COVID has changed the whole landscape. We can put out the big motorcade again like we used to. Um, but this is a good opportunity to speak to some of the persons in your living room in East Rural. Um, I'll let you have the last word. Well, I will encourage persons again. Um, where you have persons coming from overseas, and I'll tell them again, we need to ensure that we are more careful in coming to Jamaica, in moving around, give yourself that period of quarantine to make sure that all is well. We definitely cannot afford another surge in Jamaica. For my own constituents, I can tell you, I feel very disheartened, very hurt, very emotional about it. The money we need for road, for water infrastructure, for street lights, for education in the constituency, money needed by farmers, we cannot afford to keep using it to do COVID response, COVID response, COVID response. It is well and good. We have done very well so far, but we literally need to be our brother's keeper in ensuring that we are investing now in moving forward with the needs of the country. And we all have a responsibility and role to play in keeping Jamaica and Jamaicans safe. Mrs. Solis, thank you so very much. Well said. <laughs> and all the best to you. Okay. We will certainly <laughs> make some time to come and visit you out there in East Rural. All the best to you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, Chapo. All right. Have a Bye. nice evening. <laughs> All right. So there you have it, folks. That was Mrs. Juliet Holness, the Member of Parliament for East Rural St. Andrew. And um, we, 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 we're happy to have her on. Um, that's a busy lady. I mean, she has a 24-hour um, a schedule and two bouncing boys growing up, now grown young men. Um, speaking of young men, we're going over into North Central, North Central Clarendon. When we return, we take a quick breather. And when we return, we will visit a good old friend down there in North Central. So stick and stay with us. Um, we'll be right back.
North Central Clarinda. We are a resilient people, a people of strength, hope, talent, God-fearing and proud. Our greatest challenges are no match for our sense of community. We gain strength through our unity. Our unity gives us hope to our farmers toiling in the morning sun, tending their fertile fields providing sustenance to our people in these times of challenges and struggles. To our youth, excited by the promise of a greater future, motivated and innovative. To you, community members, joined together with a sense of purpose. There is hope for a better future. Let us remember the struggles and triumphs of our ancestors, the resilience of our nation. No crisis can stop our spirit and no pandemic can kill our motivation. North Central Clarinda, one leader, one government, one people, together, better with Mesta. All right, welcome back, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As promised, we're not going to waste a lot of time this evening. We have with us the young man. I call him the young man. <laughs> my friend, my brother, my brethren, my party, Senator Robert Nesta Morgan. Greetings and peace profound, positive vibrations and positive sound. I know you remember that. That's three years ago. How you do? Senator Morgan. All right, we can't hear him a bit. So let us try and fix his mic. And then we, How there you, you go. How are you? How are you? Blessings. I said greetings and peace Good profound. Night. Good night to you, my friend. How are you? Greetings, my friend. How are you? I'm willing. Right. I am doing awesome. You're not coming through as you're not coming through as as sharp as you usually be. So let us see if we can fix the audio because you know the folks are here. <laughs> you hearing me better yeah. now? Yes, a lot better. You hearing me better now? Awesome, one hundred percent. All right, hold on. Let me let me fix this phone. Yes, because you know you know our folks haven't seen you oh, in a long that? while. Uh, up a little bit, up a little not bit. Not hearing you at all, Chapo. Not hearing you. Uh, you're not hearing let me, me at all, eh? Yes, we have to try and get this right with with Robert, folks. Um, Nesta Morgan is our guest, Senator Robert Morgan is our guest you need to unmute yes. my mic no, 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 no. all right so i'm hearing you and you are coming through a little muffled but let's see if we can get it right huh? is this better oh, yes man can you hear me now perfect all right awesome all right so great to see you robert how, how is life yes. in north central all is well, all is well. We're doing the work. We're doing the work every day. Awesome. Work. You saw the yes. first lady just came through a while ago? Yeah, man. Mrs. Mrs. Awesome. Oscar. You know, like, when, uh, the first, when the first lady you know graces us with her presence, we have to be thankful. Definitely, definitely. Yes. So talk to us, man. We want to we want to get into some of the politics. We hear you're kicking up a storm down there. We hear uh, uh, on Cliff Hughes. We hear somebody on Cliff Hughes call the other day and say how much you 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 you're nineteen percent ahead in poll. And what what's happening? Talk to your friend, man. We don't live like that. Talk to me. What? There you go. The only, the, the, only, the, the only poll that matters is the one on election day. <laughs> pay a lot of attention to polls what we do is we go out there every day every single day and we do the work representing the jamaica labor party preaching the good news of the andrew holness led government so we're not yes. really watching polls i mean polls we, we know we're doing well we know we're making ground the people love the party they love andrew holness they love what we're doing they love the progress and prosperity that has come to the country so mm -hmm. we don't have, we're not really worried what what we are concerned about every day is that we put in the work and motivate the workers and that as many people as possible understand what we're about and understand the vision that we're coming with for the constituency right right well i i have the opportunity of visiting that constituency recently yeah. and the feedback i must say 
is 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 awesome. I mean, people are resonating with the the type of politics that you are bringing to the table. What makes you, Robert Nesta Morgan, different from what the people of North Central had before? Well, our philosophy you know, is that we depend on the wisdom of our elders, and we have a lot of energy, and we have a couple of ideas that we want to use. So, our campaign is a collaboration between those who are very experienced, people like Mr. Charles, a lot of the persons who have been here for a very long time, and bringing some new, fresh ideas of things that we have seen across the world, because we know we traveled extensively with the Prime Minister. So we got a chance to see what other countries are doing all over the world. And we're trying to bring in some of those things into the constituency. Um, a lot of things have been done in here. A lot of roads have been fixed. The government has tried a lot to improve the water supply. But as the country now begins to have a better economic position to do more, we think that based on the evolving prosperity that we're doing, building a new Jamaica, we can do a little bit better in North Central. Right, right. And that, that is what you're picking up on the ground, is that, you know, you, 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 you are carrying a new mantra. You are coming in with an inclusive style politics where you are touching base with everybody and yes. not just people of either party. I think you are going yes. through and what you are picking up on the ground is that you are resonating with the people of the constituency and not just the supporters of the political party. Is that what it is? Yes, the, the amazing thing is that we have a large number of, of PNP people who have, who have switched to join the team. Um, it's, when you go on the road, I mean, I saw a guy the other day, I won't call his name, and somebody said to me, don't go in another yard, there is a PNP. And I said, well, I go to every yard, I visit everyone. And when I went in there, he said, Mr. Morgan, you know, long me away, with my arm Yes. And he's been walking around. To the, to, the, to the upset of some other people who are on the other side. He has yes. been walking around all over Chapleton with my armband. So our philosophy has always been inclusion. When I was growing up, I never knew PNP or JLP. I just knew that if I want some salt, that person they have some salt, and if I want the cut of butter, that person have the butter. They never yes. asked me, they gave me a labor right or a PNP. So coming in here as a campaign, and it's the same philosophy that the Prime Minister preaches, everybody can join the train the door is open our arms are open to welcome everyone mm -hmm. to build a new jamaica you cannot just have one side alone if comrades want to come on board and help us and vote for us we should welcome them with open arms because mm -hmm. the bigger the majority the better the government right now covid has hit not just uh, some section of Jamaica, but it, it 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 impacts every single constituency and every single constituent um, in yes. North Central. How has COVID impact that constituency, and and what are some of the things that you have done to mitigate against the the, the, the impact of it? Well, luckily we have not had um, any outbreaks per se. I mean, there was one incident in an era. Um, over in the Moko division, but that was quickly dealt with and we have not had any incidents or suspected cases of COVID. But the COVID has had a serious economic impact, not just in terms of the fallout as it relates to less economic activity that is taking place across the island, but also the investment that people have to make to protect themselves, buying masks, sanitizers, schools now have to be finding ways of accommodating students in this very different world. So even our campaign is different. Um, we have had to be wearing a lot of masks. We have had to be giving people masks where we can find them. And we have had to, one of the things that I have done is every couple of weeks I distribute hand sanitizers to the taxi drivers in Chapleton. Because to me, taxi drivers are some of the most exposed people in, in case anything should happen. So there's an economic impact. There's also a social impact where for a long time we were not able to keep events. A lot of persons here depend on events, the little parties in the square, to sell a little produce, to sell some soup and some corn soup and all of that. Now that is coming back a little, but we still have a lot of people who are afraid to engage. I met a guy the other day, 
down in a, in a new dance who said that he hasn't left his house or his community since March when COVID came about. And there mm -hmm. are a lot of people in the constituency who are afraid to go out because they are saying, why well, I don't know how to catch COVID. So our job is to continue to educate people to protect themselves. But the reality is that we have to find ways of protecting ourselves while rebuilding our economy. And I think that's one of the things that I, I have to be preaching every day. That yes, COVID still a keep, but yes. we still need to make sure that we start the economic activity so that we can get back to building back the country and recover stronger. Right. Um, you, you, your slogan is better with Nesta. Yes. And yes. people might see you, you know what, let me not even say it. I was about to say people might see you as a neophyte in the political space. A neophyte in the sense of a first time member of parliament or a first time yes. candidate for member of parliament. Yes. But not a neophyte in terms of the politics. And you and I know that. You have yes. done something, Robert, that I look at and I realize when I saw that move, a political move that you've made since you were um, ratified as a candidate for North Central. And when I saw that move, I said, this fellow is not just the ordinary guy. You have placed your office in one of the strongest PNP division <laughs> in North Central. What are you thinking, Robert? Well, I mean, Chapter is the capital of the constituency. <laughs> and if you're, if you're seeking to represent the constituency, then you have to put your headquarters in the capital. That's, you ever read the book, Art of War? <laughs> that play, that move by putting your constituency office right there. Is straight out of <laughs> the art of war. No, but, um, to be to be serious about it though, um, we are creating a safe space for everyone, not just labor rights, not just PNP, but the office. Politics is no longer just about votes in a chopper. A yes. politician is now someone who gives advice, someone who channels persons towards government services. So your office is not just a political headquarters. It's a safe space where people can come and get service. And Chapatan is the center of the constituency. It is the center of commerce. You have some appeal down the road. You have penance up the road. But Chapatan is where um, the largest wholesale is. It's where the, po the largest police station is. It's where the largest schools are, the largest library, the largest churches. So it is natural that i would want to put my office here because this is where most of the economic activity is concentrated in the constituency additionally we are not interested in having a conversation about strongholds what we are interested in having a conversation about is how we can build a better north central how we can right. empower people economically empower the youths i mean i hear other persons from the losing candidate side speaking about the office and all of that. And I keep saying to them that our vision is development. And if you look at our infrastructure, what we have done over the last couple of weeks, let's look at our office, how it is set up. Look at the work that we have done with the black tanks. Look at how we are beautifying places like Coco Peace where we painted the bus stop. Look at how whenever there's something that happens in the constituency, for example, we have some landslides in some areas. We quickly deal with it um, because we're not going around and looking at the problems and doing a video and talking about the problems. We're actually fixing problems. Well, that's a good one. That 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 polling division there. I don't know which which division that is, but they're knocking at the door. That is Moko. You there know. you go. Mocha is calling. <laughs> so this is this is this is the the, the map of the constituency. This is Chapelton. Yes. This is Mocha, right? And um, if you look at this one, if you can see, it, yes, this is um, this is Rock River Division. Right. Right. So I just put them up temporarily so that yes. people can actually see what right. it is that, what it is that we're dealing with. 
Awesome. The, the, the point of our, our campaign, Chapa, is focused on solutions. Right. Just identifying the problem. I think every Jamaican could walk on the road tomorrow and they could find a hundred problems in the country. Mm -hmm. As a young person who come from here, who grew up here, who went to school here, everybody in North Central knows what the problems are. Water, roads, infrastructure, telecommunications. These problems have been with us for a long time. Our government has really tried hard to alleviate. We've fixed more roads in North Central than at any other time since Larry, since um, our, our Bradrick, who was, who, who was our General Secretary and Agriculture Minister, and give credit to Mr. Charles. He has done a lot of work on roads. Also, Councillor um, Mitchell, Councillor Brown, and Councillor Morrison Moko. So anybody can identify a problem, but very few people are willing to take the initiative and act to provide the solutions. And even right. before I, became, I am the member of parliament, I am hitting the ground running by providing solutions to some of the problems. The Black Tank project is very important to me because when the, the truck usually comes every other week with water. So sometimes you run out of water and some of the people said to me, why Mr. Morgan, I wish there was a tank somewhere where mm -hmm. you had a night when you want some water, we could have got out and get some water. So I said, all right, and I called some of my friends and they have assisted me over the past two months by donating some black tanks and we, we plan to install a good amount of them on the road and yesterday i went up to one of the tanks and it was filled with water right? wow and the lady said, the truck just come fill it in about you know said tonight when we have water we're going to go down there for it and it was a very pleasing thing to me that yes you can do simple things simple things that doesn't cost a lot of money that can make people's lives better and that is awesome. what we're about not just going around like some people and just pointing right. out issues. We have pointed out the solutions as well. Yes. The politics has changed significantly, Robert. And it's I'm happy that you are bringing the new style of political representation to the people of North Central. Um, you have identified yes. with, you know, what the issues are. And mm -hmm. we're not just dealing with issues. As you rightfully say, we're dealing with solutions. Yes. We're going to take a quick break next time. And we're going to come back and give you a chance to talk to the people of North Central. Um, I know you are still on the road. I know you're still up on a boat. So we, wanna, we don't want to keep it too long. So we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come right back and um, give you a chance to talk to your people in North Central and then we'll wrap it up. Stick and stay. We'll... Listen me. Come rediscover Jamaica, the heartbeat of the world. Because tourism and the lifeblood of the country And it is an important industry We want every Jamaican to support we From Niggle Point go straight back to Porty You are we number one priority We are do everything to secure your safety Tell it to your neighbor, family and friends Join us and start feel good again Come join us and feel good again Jamaican heartbeat Jamaica Come join us and feel good again So we're cooling out at the bar with some fresh drink mixes. What drink are you going to recommend? Our specialty is the Blue Lagoon. It is named after the famous Blue Lagoon, which is right across from Goblin. I'm not going to tell you the ingredients. You have to come and try it for yourself. AC feels good to be out and about. And today, we're on location at the Acai Cafe. Hi, Kerry. How does it feel to be out and about? It feels amazing. Nice. So what are some of your favorite activities to do on our island? Chasing waterfalls, scuba diving, and of course, just chilling on the beach. It's time to feel good again. Rediscover Jamaica. There are tons of hidden gems. Staycation, staycation, staycation. So Mr. Greetings, welcome to one and all to our land of Skia, Reggae and Dance Hall. Come we go beach, river and waterfall, make we have a lot of fun until the night fall. Hold a vibe, eat something with a drink in your hand, jerk chicken, bread food, roast fish, yellow yam. This is for all Jamaicans, every boy, every girl, enjoy Jamaica, the heartbeat of the world. Come join us and feel good again.
right, so welcome back, folks. Um, we still have with us Robert Nesta Morgan and uh, um, Robert Nesta Morgan, Senator Robert Nesta Morgan. Let me make sure we keep the handle on the lid on his cup. Um, Senator, you're still here with us. Um, we don't want to keep you too long because we know you're busy out in the field. We know you, 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 you beat the pavement until we hours in the morning talking to your constituents and, and, and connecting. So we're going to give you a chance to talk to your folks while we wrap it up. We're going to give you the last word. But the reality of it is that we as a government have done more in the last four years than almost any other government probably since the 1960s. We built more houses for people in Jamaica, over 25,000. We've employed more people in Jamaica, over 70,000. We've built more roads, Ferris to Maxfield, Hagley Park Road. Mandela Highway completed that, completed Marcus Garvey Drive. We've built over 400, built or repair over 400 roads since 2016. Not only that, but we have also invested significantly in healthcare. We've repaired over 100 police stations. That has never happened before in our history. If you look at locally in North Central Clarendon, we have invested millions of dollars in water projects. We have one going on right now in Rock River, which is going to be at the end of it over $100 million. We have one that, is to, that has just been completed in Moko, which is over $40 million. And there is a lot more to come. We're repairing the, the Chapitan Hospital, which has not been repaired in decades. And it's going to be a brand new full service hospital when it's finished. We're going to be building a fire station in Chapitan. We're going to be putting free Wi Fi in Chapitan and in other community town centers. So it's a, a lot of work that we're doing, a lot of work we're planning to do under the leadership of Andrew Bonus. And I, as an agent of the Jamaica Labour Party, as a son of the soil, as somebody, who comes from here, who understands the issues and also knows the solutions to the, the problems that we have here, believe that the best vehicle to make the lives of the people of North Central Clarendon better is the Jamaica Labour Party. And I know I'm very confident that when the time comes and people have a choice to make a decision, there will be an X that is placed squarely beside the bell on election day and Andrew Wolness will get his second term because indeed chopper one good term deserves, deserves another <laughs> um Robert you 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 you've knocked it out of the park um I want to thank you personally for for coming through and for always supporting the chopping block this is our tenth hosting of the program since we started a new series and tonight is our yes, last yes. But we want to make it a duty that when we come back, we will have you back in the new look. We have better audio, better visual, and a better program. So we look forward to seeing you when we start up again in very short order. Thank and you I very much, say, my friend. Tepa, I want to say before you go, I want to say a big thank you to all our friends on social media. I don't know if I can call all of them because there are so many. Listen. If it wasn't for you guys on social media, the Jamaica Labour Party probably would not be in power right now. Because whenever they come with their propaganda and their lies, it is the persons on social media who have done the research. I remember Crown and Anchor. It was a very important one where people on social media actually went out there and took pictures of the building that was the international headquarters of this multinational corporation, which did not exist. And there are several other issues where persons on social media or bloggers have gone out there and they have fought for the Jamaica Labour Party because they believe in the JFB, they believe in Andrew Wilson, they believe in the philosophy that we are pushing forward. So I just want to thank every single one of you guys out there. Unlike some people, we cannot afford to pay you because we don't have a propaganda budget and we know that you do it for the love and not the like. So I want to say <laughs> to every single one of you guys out there, thank you very much. Continue doing the work. You know you have my full support you know you have the support of the party so now that we're entering into a period of great challenges and ultimate triumph i want you guys also to remain focused and not be distracted thank you very much Chapman. thanks to you all yeah man thank you so much uh robert all right folks so that was robert 
Nestor Morgan, and um, he is coming to you live from North Central. North Central is the place um, that is where uh, Robert will vie to represent the people of that constituency. And I can tell you from my sounding on the ground when I went there, um, they love him. He's a son of the soil. And it's always a good thing. I think it was Bruce Golden who had advocate, advocated somewhat for representatives to be connected to their constituency. And I think Robert has shown that. You know, we walk the ground in there, you'll, you'll hear from people. And they will tell you um, how much of a son of the soil he is. So again, thank you, Robert. Thank you again to Mrs. Holness for passing through and um, giving us an update on uh, East Rural. Uh, We're going to invite them back again, folks. Um, this is our last show for this 10 show series. And we look forward all things being equal if everything works according to plan. And if God, um, if it is thy will, we will come back again very shortly and um hopefully we can do this again bigger and better i want to take a quick moment to say thank you to everybody who participated everybody who shared everybody who joined us um joins us every week um there are some new people here there are persons who have been here from before we even started from we started in 2017 2016 actually um, we started in 2017 right through until now and there are persons who have been joining us from from those times and they're still here with us um philip edwards we see you um i want to thank also the persons who've contributed in terms of technical support um, um helping us to to get the thing to where it's at and hopefully if like i said if all things work according to plan um the next 10 show series will be from a better place um we're sorry folks we didn't get a chance to bring delano Seavright on this evening we wanted to get an update as to how things are going as it relates to the reopening of the borders and the reopening of some of the hotels the flight and all that good stuff he's in a location somewhere down there in westmoreland um and the connections are not very good and we don't want to bring anybody in that we're not getting a good connection from. So again, folks, I want to just take a moment to say thank you. Paula Fuller, we see you. Um, Angeli, Angela McCoy, we see McKay, sorry, we see you. Annet Grant, um, Joseph McCurdy, good to see you. Pauline Gooden, good to see you. Cheryl Wallace, a loads of respect to you, my friend. Um, Sonia Hibbert, good to see you. Patroy Seal, thank you. Thank you to Patrice. She's been the the, the the one of the big support behind this this whole chop and block stuff um odian odian statistician grant good to see you my friend um gavin bailey um who else we got there we see camille mcleod camille wright um alex higgs tony beckford um kerry francis we see marvin la beach uh Ken Roy, Thomas, a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people. Alan Moody, Karen Brown, good to see you, my friend. Um, Dwayne Ebanks, Banky. Um, so it was a great journey. I enjoyed every single show. Um, Warren Morrell, big up yourself. <laughs> That's a Morrell. Warren Morrell, big up yourself, my friend. Good to see you. Um, Patrick Brazek. Um, Basil Duba Thompson, good to see you. Evan Campbell. Uh, Michael Carter, uh, Rayon Samuels, Nordia White, and a bunch of others. I can't name everybody, but um, for those persons who are from that group, that little group that we normally hang out and chit chat, I want to say thank you to you guys. You've been um, awesome. You've been a great um, support. Gavin Walker. Uh, Joshua James, um, Oral Campbell, good to see you, my friend, and 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 everybody. I, I can't name everybody, but you all know. I appreciate you guys. I in 2017 when I started out, there was a point when I had to share the show, I had to go in there and share it and drop it on everybody's page, and uh, 
I have not been doing so because you guys have taken that role up and have handling it handled it so well. You guys have shared this, you guys have sent it all over Jamaica and all over the diaspora. Uh, we hope that next time when we come back, we can package something which is even more um, beneficial to people. We want to embark on a whole campaign of educating voters. And if you notice, I said voters, because I'm not coming back with the intention for us to be educating labor rights. It's to educate voters, because I think the time is perfect for us to move away from just disseminating information that is just for one side. I think it's important that people who support the People's National Party and people who support the Jamaica Labour Party, I think it's important that both electorate get some level of education as to how the political landscape is, as to how services are. Um, it amazes me sometimes when you walk into constituencies and um, you listen to how people talk and you listen to the information that they have access to, and you listen to what they know, and you realize that there's a need. And perhaps one of the reasons why we've always dubbed Jamaica PNP country. And, you know, when you go into some constituencies which are strongly supported by the People's National Party, and you listen to some of the persons who you talk to, you recognize that there's a need to educate these people because a lot of, lot of folks don't know. I gave out some statistics because I, walked into five constituencies and i deliberately went into those constituencies and spoke to pnp lots of pnp supporters and um in one particular constituency and I'll, I'll give you the numbers on that one i spoke to 23 hardcore pnp supporters and from the 23 22 indicated to me that they will vote for the jamaica labor party not simply because of the candidate that the JLP has in there, but they will vote because of Andrew Holness. They are voting for the government because they saw what the government has been doing and they are comfortable with the leadership that has been provided by Andrew Holness. And that's what I got from 22 out of 23. I think one gentleman said he will vote for the Jamaica Labour Party because the candidate on the ground, um, he could see what the candidate was doing. Um, and this was very, 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 very profound because, you know, you talk about a swing. Well, I'm not going by the poll that, that is published in the papers. What I am saying to you is what I'm validating what these posters are saying because they are using scientific matrix to come up with these numbers. And um, they are using sample size of a thousand. Now, the biggest sample size in, in Jamaica that anybody could use to, 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 to come up with a poll figure is the canvas that is being done by constituencies. No pollster in Jamaica can ever um, tabulate a sample size as big as the, the, the canvas that is done by the constituencies. And these are the numbers that we look at, and these are the numbers that we will be dissecting. We'll be pulling apart these numbers and we'll be publishing our own finding. Because I don't believe that anybody, any poll number in Jamaica, any poll, any pollster in Jamaica can come up with a sample size as big as that of the canvas that is done by constituencies. So we're going to look at those and that's where we're going to pluck our our numbers from because we are going to be publishing what we believe is the true poll numbers and how it is measuring up. And we've started the work on that now, a group of us have started to work on that. And when that is out, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised to see some of the numbers that are coming out right now. And if we were to slip this poll number, or if we were to slip this number under the desk of the prime minister, he probably would be blown away. But we might not do that. We're going to keep that information close to our chest. Alisa Archer, good to see you. Um, Kerry Francis, good to see you. Sharon Davis. Um, Angelo Ridley, good to see you. Um, all the best to you all. I'm not going to keep you all too long. It's our final show. Like I said, it was a blessing. 
We appreciate everybody who contributed. We appreciate everybody who shared and who give us the motivation to keep doing what we do. Again, thank you so much. Um, we're going to drop the mic. We're going to take our ourselves and we will announce our return very soon. Blessings. Blessings on you all. Enough love. Enough respect. Thank <laughs> you.